Welcome to Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. It is uh, that time again. It's another episode of Open Lines. And I have been trying to get another size kink or size fetish episode in the books. And uh, a couple of people that I've, I've spoken to have not, have not come around, let's say, have not actually put a date or a schedule on the books. And fortunately, yeah. Joe Voter from Coiled Fist reached out to me after I placed uh, an ad on a new group, uh, a new Facebook group. I can't remember what the name of it was, but I'm sure we'll go over it now. Uh, please help me welcome Joe Voter from Coiled Fist. Joe, how are you? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I can't complain. I can't complain. We're we're, uh, we're right in the middle of summer. We're getting nice weather, thankfully, and and here we are. Now we've met we've met personally. Yep. We met at uh, SizeCon. Yeah, right before the world shut down, we right. got to <laughs> yeah, right before the world changed. You're absolutely right. So we got to meet a little bit. I um, I kind of was thrusted into this world. That is size con, that is size fetish, size kink. Originally known or more uh, defined out there broadly as macrophilia, which is the fascination or sexual fantasy involving giants, be it giantess, giants, men. But you you like to call it uh, size fetish and size kink. And, and that's that's something that I've noticed a lot with the community. Depending on who you talk to, they call it very different things. For you, what's the most uh, comfortable name for it? I'm usually pretty open with like most of the different names, but I feel like maybe for the broader perspective of who might be listening, the size kink might be an easier definition for everyone to kind of grasp with. Okay. And for you, what does size kink mean to you? It's having that, just like that interest in the size dynamic, whether it be like plausible or different things. I'm usually more interactive sizes types of things. Like if we're going to talk shrinking, which is easier for me to think of size ranges to communicate to people, like something around like an action figure size all the way up to normal size. So even with half sizes, things are fine. But then I've chatted with people who are also into it that like going down to centimeters microscopic and completely unseeable sizes. How do you find out something like this? How do you find out that you are, because this is one of those fantasies or fetishes or kinks that you really have to get, you have to get very, you have to go inside. You have to get very, you have to know what you're doing mentally, let's say to, to fulfill something because it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's very different in my opinion. And I think that you, you have to craft and be a, ve- a really good storyteller depending on uh, who you're with or or how you get yourself off. How do you find out something like this about yourself? Well, I think like a lot of the things that open up to it, like, you know, most of like myself included and the people that I've chatted with, like you don't even like realize it's a thing until like online it tends to pop up. So, like, that was how I first learned that it was an actual thing. But, you know, I knew I had an interest just even as a kid from just, like, certain TV shows, movies, and cartoons. It's like sometimes it's like I would be drawn to different things where they would have, like, a giant or a smaller person and different things like that. But then when the Internet came out, I found I'm like, oh, this is, like, an actual thing, and other people think this way because... Before that, you kind of always tend to think you're some weirdo that you've got this thing going on that no one else would understand. And then you find other people are into it. When I actually started talking with some of the older gentlemen online, I found out that there actually was a group of people that interacted through the post mail before the Internet came out. I guess one of the guys did like a personal ad in the paper. And they got like a whole group of like 11 people or more that would be sending each other pictures they would find or make or stories they would write. So there was this whole pre-internet group of people and community that would just interact and exchange their fantasies and ideas through the regular postal mail. Wow. I can only imagine what the internet like did for them 
the fact that now at the touch of uh, your fingertips, you can find all of this stuff, all that stuff that they were, they were doing before the internet, pre-internet. Yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy to learn about that. Cause that was the first thing that I'm like, I, it blew my mind to know that there was just like even people who connected like way before that mm -hmm. and had their own like sort of thing. I'm like, wow, there's like a whole history and roots I'd never learned when somebody started telling me that. I always feel like you can remember the first thing that you saw that was like, whoa, this is something that I'm attracted to or something that, that something happened to my body right now. Do you remember specifically the scene or the, the well, movie or? We're trying to go back to earlier. It was before I would even know that something happened to my body, but it was just like the regular interest. Like I remember probably one of the earlier cartoons I liked to watch a lot was like this old 1939 Gulliver's Travels cartoon. Mm hmm that would get aired and stuff like that when I was a kid. So there would be a lot of different things in there. Probably like some of the specific scenes that were the most of interest to me would be like when he would be like picking up the Lilliputians or holding them in his hand and different things like that. When you see, uh, and we're going to get into a little bit of popular culture in a little bit, but um, from then on, when you would, when you would see it few and far between, you would just be fascinated by it. Yeah, that would be something I would always like want to watch again. Or sometimes, you know, when Blockbuster was a thing, it's like that would be one of the videos you might want to rent to see again. Mm -hmm. And some of the different things. And then, you know, when you're going through the video section, anything where they had something that looked that way, you would always try and read the description. And you'd get, of course, some of the videos that would, you'd look at the cover and it would catch your attention and then realize it had nothing to do with size throughout the movie whatsoever. That was just the publicity shot. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when Howard Stern's private parts came out, they had him as like the snake and giant standing outside of a building. Yeah. But, you know, there's nothing having to do with size in that movie whatsoever. It was just the publicity shot on the cover. And I'm like, jerks. Yeah, it's almost like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> it's like they, 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 lure, they tried to lure me in and they have nothing for me. <laughs> Growing up in your experience... Because, uh, okay, so you, you say you found a lot of stuff uh, via the internet, but between the time that you watched Gulliver's Travel and between the time that uh, the internet came out, what was it like? You had, Do you identify as gay? I do, yes. I did not then, but... Okay. What was dating like, or what is dating like when you have a size kink? Well, it's still pretty much normal and average unless I end up meeting somebody who's from like the site or something like that. Cause I have met a few friends that, um, you know, are also into it as well. Like, you know, we met at the size con, so I've met up with friends that I've chatted with online from there. And like, I've met up with friends just to like, travels like i go to florida and i have a few friends that i'll meet up with down there um i actually saw online the other day that someone's trying to organize a new york meetup and in the fall i'm going to be traveling to california and so i posted online about that i think we're going to have a couple of friends that are going to be getting together over there that all share the thing so and now when we get together we sometimes will and won't even talk about our mutual size interests. We'll usually touch on it at least a little bit with everybody, but we have normal, regular conversations outside of that. And, um, but then we'll have times where we talk about the different interests. I had two different times where I was seeing somebody where I actually told them about it when they weren't into it. How did that turn out? Well, the one was, they were both, they were both very good with it. Like the one guy, he actually had a foot fetish. Mm -hmm. So he, I think that was like how I met him. Cause a lot of the people that are on like the size interest, a lot of them do seem to have a foot fetish, which can kind of make sense to me because I feel like somebody smaller on the floor or something like that, they're going to be at feet. So it's like a very, easy thing I think to slide into mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, so he had something of his own to open up with and the 
when I talked to the other guy about it and he, he his first reaction was that he thought it was kind of hot and he was trying to figure out like what different things he could do and whatever. And we haven't really gotten completely into going through that a little bit more yet. But so sometimes when people are in it, it's like they try working and I'm like, I'm like, I don't really necessarily need them to try working it in, but I do like being able to talk with it about Mm -hmm. or about it with them. I'm curious. So when you, when you meet up with like-minded people, when you meet up with people who are into size kink, other than hanging out, is there ever, do you guys ever, I come from what you remember, I come from a gay porn background. So when people say they're going to meet up and let's say they're all porn models, they're all collaborating, they're all having sex in a corner and videotaping and stuff. I know it's, it's a very outside perspective looking in, but how do meetings like that end up? Is there a five person stepping on one person or, you know, circle jerk kind of situation? I, I don't, not to get very crude, but I'm just curious as to when meetups happen in a size king community, what exactly, what can somebody be expecting? I've never really been in like one where it's been like a big, where it's erupted into like a big group orgy kind of a thing or mm-hmm. anything. It's usually, if there's been any sort of like, it's usually been more like one-on-one. I think there was one time where there was two friends together and we did actually start stepping on the person because this person liked to be little Mm -hmm. and they had a big foot fetish. So it's like we did kind of step on him a little bit. Actually, there was another one where there was probably six of us and we all were kind of stepping on one of the guys. Which was funny because he wasn't like on the floor or anything. He was on the couch. And there was just some sort of like we were kind of banter teasing back and forth. And he was trying to do something where he was like trying to like fight back or something. So I just like shoved my foot in his face uh, there. And he started reacting. So then, of course, everybody else also being around, they all just started like putting their feet on him. So... And then I think he just didn't really know what to do with it. <laughs> I can imagine too, because I think he kind of just got like lost in the moment and didn't really know what to do. <laughs> he got caught off guard. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I can imagine because you you have to use clever, you have to use clever wording. You have to say things. So what would not necessarily be dirty talk is is dirty talk in that situation. Well, there'll be all like different kinds of things. Like I'll. One of my, like, sometimes it even happens just like after the fact where you're more conversing about different things. Like, oh, I met up with like one guy, and later on when we were messaging and texting back and forth or whatever, and he's like, all I could think about was how much I wanted to pick you up and grab you right there, kinds of discussions and things. And sometimes it's like little things like that, that kind of someone will say afterwards, and then you kind of get popped and triggered when they say those kinds of words. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it doesn't all necessarily happen when you're in person chatting, but sometimes when you're texting and talking afterwards, or it could be like your second time that you're meeting and hanging out again, where somebody will say it, and then those different things come up, and it's like... Okay. And you get some of the people that, you know, they talk in their interests, and it's like, you're kind of flattered with it, but yet what they said has no interest to you whatsoever. The only reason I ask is because when you travel for meetups, I would, I would assume that some people do more than just talking. Like you're not going to travel all the way. It, it's almost like you kind of want to play in a scenario. You, you, would, I, I would think if I was going to travel halfway across the country, I'd be like, okay, well, someone's going to play out this scenario with me. Well, the travel is usually something that's been in play anyway. It's never been specifically, I mean, a couple of times it's been specifically for the meetup, but then Mm -hmm. there's a talk, there's the interactions, there are things that, you know, there are certain like prop things out there that you can get too. So, okay. Um, And um, like when I go to Florida, like I have one buddy who has a green screen. So some, we had, I want to say three or four of us together. We all just started like kind of, messing around in front of the green screen and he's been working on making videos with it one friend of mine down there surprised me one time and it was funny because we were outside in the open and he hands me this bag and he looks at me and he's like don't open it right now (laughs) and i'm just like looking at him i'm like what the heck is this that you're telling me not to open he's like actually it probably would be so bad 
He's like, but it might be embarrassing. And so now I'm like completely curious, but I'm sitting there thinking, I don't want to open this and be mortified. So then he shows me this picture and they had made a giant pair of briefs. <laughs> so it's like this giant pair of whitey tighties. I guess they had shrunk their shower curtain. And so <laughs> one of them is a very creative, crafty person. And yeah. he thought instead of the way he made this big pair of underwear. And so they thought they would give it to me when I came down to visit again. So and I came across giant rubber bands, which I had a, I actually ended up being able to amass a collection. I've been giving them away to some of my friends here and there as I've met up. So giving you a pair of giant underwear makes me, well, it'll lead me to my next question is, do you identify as the giant in the situation, the person with size in the situation? I can identify as both because I think primarily my main interest does have a bit stronger leaning towards being the smaller end of the scale. Mm -hmm. But I do also very much enjoy being in the larger size as well. So it's like I could go either way. I think if I were to ever like be in the choice where it's like you're only going to get to experience one in your lifetime, which one do you think? I think it would be the smaller one with someone who I trust very much as the larger one around. One thing I noticed about SizeCon when I was there, and one thing I've noticed or I've heard from various different people is their various different tastes. And you had mentioned you, you don't like the gore aspect of it. Cause some people like to get, if they're, if they're playing the smaller part, if they're the person that's shrunk down and they're looking up at someone that's 25, 30 feet tall and this giant is unaware that this person is small and they step on them, they crush them blood everywhere there's this aspect of gore but then there's also the idea of a small person that's kind of caressed and cuddled and held by this giant that's just walking around put him in his you know his underwear or something or holding him in his hand what category would you say you more identify with when it comes to the size fetish or the size kink I'm definitely more into the nicer kind of gentler sort of different things like that. So like I have a lot of friends who are into the crushing aspect that I've met online and different things like that too. But I'm usually more like, I like it to almost be like I was mentioning a giant that I trust sort of a thing. And that it's like, I like the idea of almost like a sort of maybe a romantic relationship, if not pre-existing between the two guys to kind of develop between them. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes like some of us have kind of coined that as being like a row macro. So, <laughs> That's pretty good. but uh, yeah, so it's like usually the nicer things. It's like, and while I say that, I also do like the fun aspect of like using the size to like tease each other back and forth. Like you were mentioning like the dumping in the underwear or the putting them in the underwear that could almost even be teased as like a timeout kind of a thing mm -hmm. where it's also going to, probably lead into something sexual happening because you know you're in the underwear right by all of the fun areas to play with so and something that could even like maybe help people who are listening that haven't been into this understand is people who have watched the newest season of the boys mm -hmm. they had this character termite who was kind of like their twisted version of ant-man so he's shrinking down of course what you should probably never do with that kind of ability is be on drugs at the same time but um he's shrinking down and all of a sudden he's talking with this guy who seems to be his boyfriend in the show and he's like all of a sudden climbing inside of his the slit of his penis and entering into there and so he's going in rubbing at all the inner walls and i'm sitting there like, while I'm watching this unfold in front of me, I'm like, this guy's got to be kind of into this, too. I can't see having the imagination to come up with this without having the interest whatsoever, of course. Because I say that the guy probably doesn't and just has a wild imagination all of his own. But to my mind, it's like, he's got to like this or something if he's getting this into it. Yeah, there's definitely... some of the details come out, mm -hmm. they actually built a giant prop penis. And when I heard that, I was like, 
I know so many people that would just love to find whatever <laughs> warehouse is storing that prop somewhere and get into it. Now, sadly, they ruined that scene. I don't really know if I want to mention how for the sake of anyone mm-hmm. who might watch that hasn't seen it already. <laughs> to spoiler it on. Yeah, spoiler alert. Like, I know. Um, yeah, spoiler alert if you want to watch it. But I'm like, then you see this whole thing where he accidentally sneezes and grows inside of him but the guy explodes and bursts all over the place and it's like ah that just like it was so great they had to ruin it with that (laughs) it's you know but it fits the show because watching the show they love they love killing people through bizarre occurrences (laughs) during sexual encounters um so i'm blowing up in general throughout the show well, now that you've mentioned it, The Boys is a very popular show on Amazon Prime, and uh, if you have not watched The Boys, you've, you, I can, I can almost guarantee because of the viral video and the memes and all that that they people have watched this scene, which is a perfect example of of size kink uh, for the size kink community. I've even had coworkers bring it up, like coworkers who just watch the show. They're like. They're like talking to each other and I hadn't started watching the series at that point, but I'd seen that scene blowing up online, which of course is what triggered me to watch it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they were talking about, I'm sitting there. I hadn't caught up to that episode of the show yet. And I'm sitting there listening to them talk about it. And I'm like, I'm trying just to listen. I'm like, I'm not letting any reaction come to my face because I'm not getting into (laughs) the fact that I've seen that scene ahead of time without watching the show. So I'm just taking it, everything everyone's saying from the show. I had started watching it, but I hadn't gotten to that episode. So I'm like listening to a bunch of them going, and I'm like, I'm like, I wonder how many people that are into this are hearing this talked about by their coworkers are like, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do at this point, And just like, listen, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or even maybe some of them are using it to talk about, I mean, I wouldn't do that at the workplace because you know, that could get you in trouble, but <laughs> it, okay. So you're a member of, of this the forum and community called coiled fist. What happens yep. in a location or a, a forum like coiled fist when something this incredibly mainstream shows a scene where one person crawls inside another man's penis <laughs> this has blown up on the coil fist like web like i just like again this was all before i had seen the show but i'm just watching for like days where it's getting i think it turned into like a seven or eight page thread of everyone talking about this and oh my gosh can you believe that just happened in a like it started out before the guy shrank the boyfriend was like he's like i want you inside me and of course when the boyfriend saying that everybody's thinking the other end <laughs> because they're just thinking like normally because typically that's what people mean when they say i want you inside me it's usually just talking about the anal sex part of it coming up and then all of a sudden they see the guy standing front ways when the guy shrinks down you're expecting him to turn and he doesn't the guy just starts walking in it's like they're like no, they're they're going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I have yet. I've seen a part of the scene. I've seen a part of the scene. I haven't seen up to the uh, the end, the the climax. Let's say, but uh, but um, I was definitely or lack of yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was definitely like whoa, uh, because that's the most sexual, and this is something that's come up a lot too. Is that's the most sexual that a size difference or a size kink has gone with two men. Yeah. Like, or am I mistaken? No, that, that, that pretty much like, I don't think I've ever seen like any sort of like a mainstream sexual thing between two men. There was, I remember somebody posting like an old kind of cartoon with a giantess where a guy was climbing inside of her. And that was like the most, there was even like an old black and white clip I remember seeing way, way back in the day, and I haven't seen it pop up since, of a little guy climbing inside of a giant woman. But that's the only, like, and the other thing everyone was, like, kind of happy with was they actually kept them as, like, humans. They were attractive-looking guys. Mm-hmm. 
Whereas in usually the other things, it's like tend to they always tend to like monster up whoever the giant is. So, and you know, there are some people that they're always making the comment they want the giant guy to be like a model. I'm like, sometimes I'd be, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'd be happy if they just kept them as looking like a human, like a normal human. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, I think that with with the response that that scene has gotten, I, I, I'd I like to think that they would do more of that stuff. But what I think might happen is I think it's more the it's more the idea that, oh, people are talking, but they're not they might be missing the point. They might be missing the point that Coil Fist or, or the size can community has has grasped grasped on because of of that scene. I think that it's more shock value at a certain point. Uh, I think they did bring Termite back again in a later episode, so spoiler again, for called Hero Gasm. Oh yes, I did. Um, I did hear about this. I don't know what happened in that episode, but um, I did. I did hear Hero Gasm. Yeah, because well, the only thing, and I'm like, it was such a brief thing and kind of disappointing. Although, again, a lot of people did love it because it brought in the for the crush aspectors because. Termite ended up getting in some sort of like a shot state in his like smaller side. And then the hero who is like their twisted Superman ended up landing on him and like crushing him under his boot. Oh, so okay. a lot of the crush people loved that scene. Although I think some of them were a little bit disappointed because it was such like this bland, like you didn't see him throughout the whole time. Then all of a sudden they had him on the ground and then they had the guy crushing him. And then a lot of people were like trying to twist it. Oh, he wasn't aware of it. But then other people are like, no, he's like Superman. He's got the super hearing and everything else. He would have definitely heard him asking for help mm -hmm. and just decided he wanted to crush him anyways, okay. which makes the most sense to me thinking about it as the comic book nerd that I am. <laughs> but. I know you were saying that you, you meet up with some, some people in the community. You had mentioned voiceover work. Tell us oh, yeah. about what, what are you doing with that? Well, I have a friend in Germany that I chit chatted with on the site for a couple of times here there, and he started doing a lot of animations and things. And at the beginning, he was just like showing like the text to read along like a silent film while he was doing them. And then he started asking if anyone was interested. So I messaged him back kind of like what happened with you for the podcast here. And so I've done voices for like a few of them. I like, it's weird because the last one I did, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I feel like more comfortable with how I've done everything. And I'm like, I like how I got my influxes of the emotion I'm trying to put out in the scenes, and different things like that. I'm like, I could definitely feel where I feel a lot less awkward. And like, it even sounds a lot less awkward to me now than it did with like some of the earlier ones that I did with him. But if you, anyone wanted to look up, he makes them by chibi robo so he's got like a lot of animations on there mm -hmm. so and if you're looking for any of the ones that i particularly did after this i do them under joe voter for my handle on both the website and for the voiceover that i've done for him and it's fun because a lot of guys that i'll have chatted with online or have seen popping up here and there will have already like we'll be working together with them. I had one friend that lives in that lived at the time in New York city. So I went and met up with him after we worked sort of worked together on this voiceover thing. Cause we really just record our own ends of it, send it to him and he puts them all together. So it's like, I met up with him and his husband the one time. And it was funny because his husband isn't into it and he is but my buddy is very much into the foot and more aspect of things so one of the times we were chatting and talking when we had to break up this was over skype though this wasn't at the in-person part mm -hmm. he takes like a granola bar goes right up to the camera and just like starts chewing on it in front of me and i'm thinking to myself you think i'm just like your husband because he likes more, you think I'm going to get into it too. And I'm like, no, I'm a whole different aspect. I'm a, I'm a completely different size kink animal, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was funny. And it was, it was cute. Cause I'm like, oh, but it was nice to see him 
trying to like, you know, play into it for me. I have two more questions for you. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to know about the NYC meeting. You said there's a meetup in NYC or you guys are putting together a meetup. Well, it popped up the other day, just like one of the guys in New York. And he didn't specifically say New York City. I'm kind of guessing because I feel like that's more local. Like everyone will be able to get there easier. And I know there's a bunch of New York City people. So, but he's like just posting it as a New York meetup. And right now he's just got a poll going to try, kind of gauge like the interest. I think I saw today that he posted the poll up on Coil Fist itself, whereas before it was just in one of the channels of the chat room. But um, so there's not too, too much detail on that. I think he's just trying to get an interest to see what could work together to try and put something together this year. When you do find out, if someone's listening and that doesn't know how to go about getting invited to this meetup, is it open to the public? Is it open to maybe a guest list or something like that? How would somebody go about getting into this meetup? Um, right now, the main thing I could think of, again, is that the one who's organizing it would probably be to look into signing up on Coiled Fist, even if it's just to create account, an account to reach out to the guy and start like going over with him to see exactly how they would get in, see what they would want to talk about. Because he might want to know more about mm. um, what the person specific intent for coming is because you do get a lot of people that will sometimes every once in a while try and troll everything Mm -hmm. so you kind of want to filter out that a little bit just to protect the people who are going that it's their actual interest but i mean if i were putting it together and somebody had heard about this and had an interest i would necessarily turn them away if i was doing it Mm -hmm. so like the san francisco one for when I go there in the fall. That one's gotten more like public traction because people have responded on the thread and being the one who's traveling, I've gotten a little bit of the response from that. So people have just been like private messaging me on the site or they'll respond to the thread. There was even like a discord group created so that people could talk ahead of time to try and make you feel more comfortable because a lot of people haven't met up with somebody before. And so it would be a completely new thing to them. And so you want to try and do everything you can ahead to make people feel more comfortable with meeting someone for the first time from it. Who are we trying to make feel comfortable? The people that are involved already with Cold Fist or the people that are interested in in joining something? Well, because the only big thing is on Coil Fist right now, it's like the people from Coil Fist who've never met anybody before. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of those nerves. And like, especially, I think, because it's a sexualized kind of interest, you never know what sort of people are going to be showing up, what everyone's going to be expecting mm-hmm. from it. Like some people will just want to meet up, have a conversation with a bunch of people that think the same way and that'll be it. And to me, that's also a great experience to have too. Like I would have, I would not be disappointed at all when well, that's all that happened because you know, the meetup isn't my main reason for the trip. I was going there to hang out with a friend that I already know there anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if something does happen, that wouldn't disappoint me. Now that doesn't mean that something might not happen while I'm there, (laughs) but, um, like, but it's like, that's kind of, and some people that's all they want is just that they don't want to necessarily step into something. I mean, you were at the size con event too, and that didn't turn into like a big, everybody's trying to, you know, get each other off or anything kind of or either. It's like, it's a very, you want to keep it respectful. You want everyone to feel as comfortable with what they want to experience from it as they can. And also one thing I noticed was, and and you're right, it's, it's discretion because you aren't, I don't think we were allowed to have cameras at SizeCon or take pictures at SizeCon because of, of certain people that did not want, or I think there were, I think there were tags, I think, or they were wearing something that indicated that they didn't want to be photographed. Yeah. They would have the arm bands there. So it's like, if you, I forget which way it was. I don't, cause I think they did it two different ways. I think one year 
the armband meant you wanted your picture taken or you were okay with your picture getting taken. And I think one of the other years, which might have been the last one, the armband meant you didn't want your picture to get taken. Mm-hmm. And because these meetups are going to be much smaller, it's easier to just, you know, you can just put it out there. Hey, like with the meetups that I've done where we've had like the six or more people, it's been like, hey, let's get a group photo together. And it's like, you can do one with everybody. And then, but if, then that way, if somebody doesn't want, like, let's say Jake Smith is going to post it on their coil fist thing, but Zach Macro doesn't want their picture to go on the site because, you know, they don't want a fetish site thing going back to their professional job. Mm-hmm. They might say, can you just like leave me out of the one you're going to post or something like that? Just so everyone knows. Cause it's easier to do that with a smaller group versus like size card where you're going to have over a hundred people. I want to know what you would tell listeners and people who are like, Whoa, I don't know if I can deal with this. How can somebody like, what, what do you, what would you like people that are not familiar with the size can community to know about, like someone, someone like you, for instance, personally. Well, I think the biggest thing that might be to help people who are like, I can't handle this with somebody is just to remember, no matter what, you're still talking to another person and human being. Like they might have this kink thing that you don't understand and you can't wrap your mind about, but that doesn't define them as a person. It's like this aspect and maybe to some interesting, to some unknown side of them, but it doesn't define who they are in general. They have all kinds of everyday things that you might find out there. Like, you know, I mentioned earlier, like comic book nerd that I am. It's like, that's something that would be like a very normal thing. Although some people find that weird in and of itself too. But, you know, we've got our different things and it's like usually... And I remember at SizeCon, you had done your um, presentation of everybody's got a thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even though they might not understand my thing, it's like they probably have something that is their thing that they don't talk to everybody else about. So it's like, you might not get this of me, but think about whatever your thing is that maybe you don't talk about to everybody else or you don't understand. And it's like, it's kind of to me what that is to you. It's like, we're all just human beings and we don't have to talk about the kink stuff. If somebody else doesn't get it, we can just talk about, you know, the weather or vacations and different normal things like that. It it doesn't take up our whole lives. I couldn't have said it better. If people want to find you and people want to talk to you, uh, the best place to go is Coiled Fist? Coiled Fist, or I have the Joe Voter handles going for, like, I have a Twitter and Instagram that are all under those, too. So they would be easy to find. Some of them might have been cut down to Joey V just for the sake of something a little bit shorter and simpler. But, okay. and then, because, you know, just because of the voter, everyone's like, so are you very political? And I'm like, <laughs> no, it was just something I thought of at the time when I was just making this handle. It has nothing to do with the fact of me voting or not, even though I do vote because I feel like everyone should exercise their right to vote. Mm-hmm. But, and Joe voter is uh, all one word. J O E V O T E R. Yeah. Okay. All right. And that's where they can find you. The demystifying gay porn. You can find us on every podcast directory. You can find us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Uh, this is the episode right before the season finale. I'll be back for season four. It'll be a little different. However, um, yeah, you've been listening to Demystifying Gay Porn. Joe Voter, I have to thank you very much for your insight on the size kink community and size kink and size fetish. Demystifying Gay Porn, like I said, this is Ike Grande. I'm your host. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers.